Hi folks, today we are focusing on photo passes. So I've been a music photographer since 2004 when I shot my first show, which was actually Megadeth, which is a pretty big show for your first show. And since then I have photographed I don't know how many gigs, hundreds, maybe even thousands of shows from the smallest tiny little bar all the way up to the biggest arenas and festivals. And I love it. My music taste is really, really varied. So I've shot all kinds of genres from the heaviest of metal all the way through to people like Beyonce, Kanye West and Justin Bieber. And I have had pictures published in the likes of Rolling Stone, NME, Metal Hammer, Kerrang, Rock Sounds, quite a few different publications. So I think I've learned a few things along the way. And in this video, I want to share a few of the things I've learned, especially on how to get access to shows, which is probably one of the most difficult things to do when you're starting out as a music photographer. I'm going to share with you a few different ways that you can try to try and get that elusive photo pass to shoot your favorite band or maybe just a band that you're interested in or maybe you just want to get out and take pictures of live music even if you don't really know that much about the band or maybe you don't even like them and I posted a video a few months ago about my top tips about music photography I will link to that in the description below you can go and check that out if you want to but in this video I wanted to talk specifically about photo passes and how you were going to get them there's multiple ways that you can try to get them but obviously it's not easy to get them especially for the bigger shows and it's actually a good thing that it's not easy to get photo passes for a big show because then the photo pit would just be full of tons and tons of photographers. Some of those might not even be working. They might just be big fans of the band and decided they wanted to come down with their little point and shoot camera or even an iPhone. I did actually see a, an iPhone in a photo pit once, but the management of the band were not happy that that happened. So usually it's people, professional photographers or people at least with good photography gear that are in that photo pit they've got the credentials and they're allowed to be there but how did they get there now photo passes are basically the thing that you're given which means that you can prove that you're supposed to be there to take pictures it gives you the access usually to take pictures from a certain spot and that can vary from anything like a stick on satin pass which is very very common from the bands or it could be something that gives you a bit more access this is an all access uh pass which you put around your neck it's like a laminate Sometimes it's just a stamp on the wrist or maybe a wristband and sometimes you don't even get that. The reason I'm covering these up is because people do actually try and copy passes and sneak in with a fake pass. So please, another point that I need to stress, if you do get a photo pass, don't share it on social media because people can download that picture and then make a copy of the pass and the band's management and promoters do not look upon it favorably when they see people posting pictures of photo passes online. So just keep that in mind. Now, the whole premise that you have to remember about getting a photo pass in the first place is that essentially you are providing a service to the artist because you are giving them press coverage, which means that your pictures are going to go into a publication or even to an online blog or somewhere else where the band is going to get exposure and publicity. So by them allowing you to have a photo pass, you are in turn repaying them because you are getting the band coverage. If you're not already working for a publication, then there will be other options and I'll go into those later on in the video, including one of the main ways that I have been able to get photo passes over the years and even ended up interviewing some of my favorite artists. So why do you need a photo pass and why would you want a photo pass in the first place? So if you've ever bought a ticket for any kind of gig of a certain size, you may have noticed on the ticket or sometimes when you buy the ticket, it says no cameras allowed. Sometimes you're allowed cameras with like fixed lenses, so the smaller little cameras that you can stick in your pocket, but most of the time anything bigger than that is a no-no for fans who are actually attending the concert. So if you want to get into the show with something like this, then somebody somewhere is going to want to know why you're bringing this into the venue. And the bigger bands will want to know that the people who have access to take photos are there for a reason. The reason that they're there is to give them more publicity 
and the, the quality of the pictures that are going to be taken of that show are going to be of a certain standard. So if you do get approved for a photo pass, you'll have access to places where the fans are not allowed to go to make sure you can get good pictures. And sometimes you're only allowed to stay for a few songs and maybe you can't even stay for the rest of the concert. Now there's a few different ways that you might be approved for a photo pass. You could be working for a publication, so maybe a newspaper or magazine or a music blog something like that you might work for an agency which is basically a company which is employing photographers to take pictures and then they are selling those pictures onto various different publications you could just be working for the band so you might have come along with the band and you're covering the event especially for them or you could be working for the venue where the gig is happening or maybe even for a brand or the people who make the drum kit or the guitars something like that so there are multiple avenues that you can try to become a music photographer and then to get your photo pass. Now in my experience the first people to contact if you are looking for a photo pass will be the band's PR people that's their press contact or the promoter of the show depending on what kind of show it is and where you are and like I mentioned earlier they will want to know what you are going to give them what they're going to get if they give you the photo pass how much publicity how much coverage they're going to get so if you're a beginner photographer just trying to build your portfolio and the only place the pictures are going to end up is on your Instagram, then there's not a lot of reason for the press to want to give you that photo pass, especially if they're getting multiple requests from other photographers. If you're working for an established magazine or a newspaper, then that is going to give you a lot more clout getting your photo pass. And print publications often do get priority over everybody else, especially for the big arena shows and things like that. If you are working for a magazine or a newspaper, then typically it will be the editor or somebody at that publication which will apply for the pass on your behalf. You don't do it yourself. And even if you're working for a music blog or something smaller like that, then usually the editor of the music blog will be the one that applies for the photo pass. I've had a lot of experience with music blogs and typically that approach tends to work fairly well, but sometimes they will want to know how many hits you're getting to your website, how many followers you've got on social media and all that kind of stuff. Basically, they're looking for an audience to get these pictures out to and they want proof that you can give that to them. In my experience, if a printed publication is applying for a photo pass, they are almost guaranteed to get approved. With music blogs, it tends to be pretty good hit rate, but with the bigger gigs, the arena gigs, you may lose out because they might just want to restrict it to the print media or agencies but music blogs are a really good way of getting into the smaller shows and even the medium sized shows. And that's something that I've done a lot over the last 15, 16 years. I think the best piece of advice I can give you when it comes to applying for photo passes is just to be respectful and try and build relationships over time because those are the things that are going to help you on your journey as a music photographer. And I can't stress enough how good relationships can make all the difference with you getting work and getting approved for photo passes. Whether that's with press people or promoters or the bands themselves or the management or the record label, whoever you are dealing with, in your emails, just be respectful and keep it short. Nobody has got time to look through hundreds and hundreds of photographs. So it's best to have a decent website where you can show your portfolio so far, no matter what that is, even if it's just your friends' bands that have been playing in local clubs around town and you've got good pictures of them, whatever you can show that shows that you can do a decent job is going to help you. But a link to a website or a quick PDF, something like that, where they can see the quality of your images very fast is going to help. And then you need to find out who is covering shows in your local area. That could be, like I say, publications, print publications, music blogs, or other websites. Just do a bit of research and then start slowly but surely sending out some emails, short emails, friendly emails, respectful emails, with a link to a little bit of a portfolio and just say that you're available and interested in shooting shows. They almost certainly have photographers already that are covering shows and maybe have been for years. So if you think you have something that you can offer beyond what they're already getting, whether that's the ability to shoot small shows, or maybe a specific music genre that you're really into that the other photographers might not want to cover, whatever it is that you think might be unique to you, it might be worth mentioning that in the email just to make them pay a little bit more attention. If you're emailing a publicist and trying to get a photo of us, just be really respectful of their time. They're probably dealing with multiple shows and multiple photographers trying to get passes for all of those shows. So they just want to know who you're going to be shooting for, what they're going to get out of it, where the show is. Make sure you let them know where the show is because they might be dealing with a complete 
European tour or an American tour, if you're emailing on behalf of a publication and there's an editor for that publication, make sure you CC them in on the email. And if you've done any coverage of the artist in the past with that publication, then make sure you link to that as well, especially if it's a music blog or something like that. When I was photographing concerts in the UK before I moved to Canada, then almost all the time I would be applying for passes through the PR people, so the press contact for the artist. But since I've moved to Canada, it's kind of switched. Most of the shows that I apply for are through the promoter of the show, and then they will deal with the band's management and the band's press people themselves. So eight out of 10 times, I'm dealing with the promoter of the show now, not the press people and definitely not the band. Unless it's a really small show, then contacting the band directly is definitely not the way to go. Now, hopefully it doesn't even need saying, but these emails should never be fake. Don't say you're shooting for a magazine or somebody when you're actually not and you're just trying to blag your way in because that will quickly get discovered and you will be blacklisted and those people will never give you a photo pass for anything again. A huge part of this career is built on trust and respect so make sure you start off your journey with that in mind so the next question is if you want to apply for a press pass and you want to get in touch with somebody's management or press people how do you find out who that is so these are the main places that i look for contact info for the bands that i want to shoot starting with their facebook page quite often on their facebook page in the about section it will have some kind of contact it's not usually the band it's usually their management or their press people. So if it says PR contact or something like that, and it might be specific to a region of the world like North America or Europe, then that is gonna be your first point of contact. If there's nothing on their Facebook page, then try their website. Quite often there is something on the website about who to contact press wise. If there isn't, then maybe just Google press contacts and see if anything comes up for that. If none of that works, then maybe try contacting the promoter of the show and seeing if they can put you in touch with somebody or maybe do it on your behalf. One other route that I've tried is contacting the record label of the band. So that's quite easy to find out just using Google or go on Amazon. Sometimes it tells you what label the last album was released on. Find a contact for that record label and get in touch. And if it's not them that's dealing with the photo passes, they will quite likely pass you on to somebody who is. And if you're still stuck and you still don't know who's contact, and sometimes these contacts are very hard to find, especially with the bigger artists, then ask around with other photographers. There's a few concert photographer groups on Facebook you could join. And usually if you put something in there, somebody in one of those groups has probably applied for a pass on the tour, maybe earlier in the tour, and will have a contact that they've used, or they will at least give you a place to start. If you're just starting out and all you wanna do is shoot shows, not necessarily the biggest band in the world. Maybe you don't want to shoot Kendrick Lamar or Pearl Jam. You want to shoot shows and you just want to go and see live music, take your camera and experience music and photography together. And that's kind of how I started doing it. Then you do have the option of just getting in touch with the band directly. You can message the smaller bands on Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is. And like I said in my previous video, link in the description, offering to give them some photos in return for them putting you on the guest list and you getting in for free that is a pretty good deal for both parties. And what about festivals, the big festivals? It kind of works in a very similar way, but obviously there's gonna be a lot more people applying for those passes, but there's also a lot more to shoot at a festival and there's a much bigger area for the photographers in front of the stage. So it's not uncommon at a big festival to see 30 photographers in the pit, but there's enough room for everybody to move around and get their different angles. And therefore there will be a lot more photo passes given out but the demand is higher so it kind of evens out so again you need to make sure that you let the people dealing with the photo passes know that they are going to get coverage for their festival and it's going to be more about the festival as a whole rather than specific bands most of the time so you are going to be applying through the press contact for the festival or the promoters of the festival in order to get access to that festival now sometimes photographers will get a photo pass but they'll only have restricted access so they might not be allowed to shoot in the main stage they might be allowed to shoot on the smaller stages around the edge sometimes i have had passes for festivals where i can't go in the photo pit down the front but i'm allowed to shoot from the crowd which 
at the beginning of the day is great because it doesn't tend to be that crowded down the front but by the time the headliners get on if you're shooting from the crowd that can be quite a challenge so often with festivals you just need to go to the festival website go to the contact information or the uh, frequently asked questions section of the website and usually you can find a little section where it says about applying for press coverage or photo coverage, whatever it is you want. And it'll give very clear directions of who you want to contact. And that's when you want to put your nice email together, showing what you can offer as far as coverage of the festival. And that's when you start that relationship with the festival promoters. And that can be an ongoing thing. Now, I've shot festivals year after year after year. I used to shoot the V Festival as their official photographer back in the UK for something like eight years. I was doing that before I moved to Canada. And over here, I've been shooting festivals like Heavy Montreal and Oceaga and after a while they just know me so they know that they can trust me and that I'm going to get the job done and it makes it a lot easier to get approved but nothing is guaranteed. Now what if you've tried all those avenues and you're not getting any replies to your emails or they're just saying sorry we can't help you on this occasion what are you going to do moving forward? Uh, you could do what I did and that is start your own music blog. And that has worked really, really well for me. Back in the UK, I started a music blog called Birmingham Live because I was based in Birmingham at the time. And that grew. We got thousands of followers on Twitter, which gave us a lot of credibility. And I ended up with a team of people who were reviewers and other photographers. And between us, we used to apply for passes and get approved on a pretty regular basis. And I shot some big gigs just for Birmingham Live. And then I decided to move to Canada and here I am in Montreal. So even before I moved to Montreal, I started a blog called Montreal Rocks. And when I got to Montreal, I used that as a stepping stone to sort of build my contacts and give a reason for people to give me photo passes. Maybe not the big gigs to begin with, but over time, we've kind of built relationships with people and now we're much more likely to get the passes for the bigger gigs and again we have a really solid team of photographers and reviewers in montreal it's a lot of work like i, I spend a lot of time on on my montreal rocks blog and it doesn't necessarily make me a lot of money but it does help me get access into gigs and it saves me money on tickets because i'm getting passes for a lot of shows that i would normally have to buy tickets for and I don't. So wherever you are in the world, find out if there's any music blogs that are local to your city or your scene or close by to wherever you live. And if there isn't, then you can start your own. And if there is, make sure you get in touch with them and see if you can build a relationship there. One last thing that you can try, which actually a lot of people don't think about, and that is to contact the support acts on the tour. So if you see a big name is coming to your town and then look and see who is opening for them, it might be worth finding out if you can shoot that band, get in touch with their press people or even get in touch with that band directly, depending on how big a band they are. And if you can get access to shoot the support band, quite often that will also allow you to shoot the main band, but not always. Sometimes you might get approved just for the support and then you'll turn up to shoot the main band and they'll say, where's your photo pass for that band? And they won't let you shoot it. So just make sure if you are going through the support band route that you know whether you are or are not allowed to shoot the headliners. So I hope some of that information was useful. Make sure you check out the other video if you haven't already about concert photography tips. And I am planning a video about camera settings for concert photography very soon. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe and follow me on my socials. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.